Greetings, dear ones. I'm Kryon of Magnetic Service. I'm back. <laughs> it just seems like a moment ago that you let me into your heart. You hear a linear message, that is to say, one word at a time, one concept at a time. It's not always been that way. For there has been an evolution in my partner's work. For when he started, that which is his higher self, which contains that which is cryon, and the meld that is there from the other side of the veil, came to him all at once. And rather than channeling, he was remembering. Trying to give the message, perhaps 30 of your minutes, and he received it in a split second. From that it went to a system where I gave him smaller groups. For he worked with this, which is the cryon energy, a personal work to slow us down. He even said the words, slow down, out loud, during his channel. The communication was for everyone to hear, everyone to see. The process of his spiritual evolution results in this. We slow down to a linear pace for him. And what you hear is in real time. He has no idea what's coming. He is not remembering anything. Now he can step aside. And let that which is the full energy of this entity present to you. And the information becomes clearer. And it becomes purer when he has no concept of what is to come. This is not something that necessarily suits a human being. For there is the bias of wanting to be prepared for everything wanting to know what's happening in the future. And so the human being postures themselves. If they don't get any messages about what's going to happen, sometimes they make things up. Mm -hmm. It makes them feel better. And he did the same. All part of the, evo uh, the, the evolvement of spiritual purpose within one man. Now, that tells you something, doesn't it? It tells you that spirit works with humans. It tells you that spirit knows about linearity. Hmm? That we are not in a vacuum somewhere else. These things which my partner has described as the influences that are multidimensional that live with you whether you call them guides or angels are directly connected to the other side of the veil so is that which is called the entourage so we have the three energies my partner teaches which are with you with you all the time now that ought to tell you something that spirit knows all about what you're going through And so for you to sit down and itemize to spirit what you're going through is redundant. <laughs> but you do it anyway, don't you? You know what? We don't care. Anytime you want to sit and talk to us, we don't care. What you say, what you do, while you're there. For we touch hands at that point. Sometimes we touch hearts. Sometimes you can feel the love of God fill you up. It's happening in, in this room. The third language is present, no matter what I say. With the human mouth of my partner, there is another language being developed in the three that is going out to these who are hearing and reading. You see, I am in the now, in a quantum state with the reader. Your dear human being in this room, at this moment, at this time, you have no concept of the reader. 
but the reader does. For that's happening now. I see the eyes on the page. I know the potential of who's going to read this. And it's going to be for those who need it. This is not going to be an endurance channel. I'm going to give you a concept, simple. But I have to start with the history. The way human beings work with God evolves. Just as that which was my partner's experience 21 years ago has evolved. And the evolution of that takes place with human permission. And it has been given on this planet through an elevated consciousness, a shift that you've been in since 1987. It creates new paradigm scenarios for how spirit works with you and how you work with God. And so I'm going to give it to you. And don't be surprised if there are a lot of threes in it. That is to say, there have been, indeed, three evolutionary steps. The one you are in now is new. It is so new, less than 50 years old. And some of you are not aware of it. Some of you use it every day. And the ones who are not aware of it are only because they love the one they're in. It's worked for them in the past. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I'm here to give you the steps that I have seen. And the first one is this. Let me give them all to you at once so that you will know what they are and then I'll describe them. I will call them dispensations. The first, that is how humans work with spirit. That is how it works between Gaia, humanity, and spirit. We'll call the dispensation of karma. We'll explain it. But not yet. <laughs> the second one, we're going to call the dispensation of trust. Masters come in, they give you another, another thing to think about regarding a relationship with spirit. Because it was time. Because humanity needed it. Because humanity was evolving. The third one, which you've only had for less than 50 years, the concept of mastery, the dispensation of co-creation. These are the three. Now what does it mean to you, Lightworker? It describes the way God works with you, how the energy pushes and pulls, what it's about. Let me start with karma. This is the oldest system on the planet. It is still here. It only evolves as the human being individually does. That is to say, it does not affect all humanity. These three steps are like available energies for evolvement. They are not then put upon the human race. That is to say, a modern human being who is not a light worker and could care less is still in the dispensation of karma. Timeless it is. Let me tell you how karma works. Karma is a system that pushes and pulls a human being energetically from one place to another for lessons. It lasts over many lifetimes. It is only developed perhaps slowly over one and then solved in another. So it is a long-term process which honors the fact that the human being is here in self-improvement. So it develops problems, throws you together in interfaces you would never have designed yourself in order to push buttons so you'll react. Karma. And you know all about it. Old souls in this room have dropped it. It no longer services you. It's old. You know it's old. It cannot exist if you are co-creating. If you are in a lifeboat, karma 
is the thing that takes the tiller, that which steers the boat, and steers you right into trouble. <laughs> because that's the only way we're going to know how you react. Karma. All of you have experienced it, for you're born with it. And by your free choice, you have to dissolve it. It is one of the things we told you about 21 years ago in the first crime publication. Dissolve your karma. You don't need it. It's an old system. You don't need it. You know how you know it works? How many of you reading this or sitting in this room would have designed your life the way it has taken place with the relatives you have? <laughs> <laughs> I have heard you cry out and say if it's true on the other side of the veil that I designed my life before I come in what are these people doing in my family mm -hmm. the sand in your oyster often the one that has your blood that's karma at its best karma at its best and there it is for you to look at. And by the way, if it's still pushing and pulling you, then stop it. Right now. Permission from spirit to dissolve all karma. You don't need it. Listen, you don't need it. It doesn't have to follow you around ever again. You don't need it. Speak to it. I hereby drop that, which is the energy of those issues that follow me from life to life that I've always had. I don't need to have those button pressed anymore. Don't be surprised if those in your family walk away. It's like a tennis match, you know, if one player decides not to play, there's no more match. It's no more fun. And therefore, that drama which spins in the family won't spin to you anymore. And the one that used to spin it with you won't be very happy that you decided to leave the game. Mm. And they'll decide to spin it with somebody else. Don't be surprised if they walk away. Prepare yourself. Love them every much. Every bit as much as you ever did. Karma. More than 2,000 years ago, things began to evolve. You had monotheism come into play. You understood one God. You understood one relationship. You understood a, a communication with one energy, which is creative force. You begin to shift, begin to change. You begin to trust. A new concept for humanity, truly. One that said, let go and let God. The dispensation of trust. And you did. Karma drops away when you do that as well. It cannot play a part in a human being that decides to become one with everything. And the oneness that you are includes the love of God and it comes into you and you feel it. It overwhelms you. You're happy alone. It's beautiful. There's nothing wrong with that. You release the tiller of your boat and it moves invisibly by the slow hand of God. It steers you to safety. So you don't have to worry about the future. There may be some bumps along the way. You don't know where you're going, you don't care. You trust. And dear human being, that is the way it has been till about 50 years ago. And then slowly it started to morph. Into that 50 years, there was an involvement that took place called the harmonic convergence. It literally shifted the dimension you were in on the planet and sped up your time. And you know that. In your hearts, how many of you can say 
you know time is going faster than it used to. Hmm? Dimensional shift. It is one of the reasons, and we've talked about it before, that there are no quatrains of Nostradamus that have come true since 87. This prophet was prophesying a whole nother earth that you left. Well, a whole nother time, a whole nother dimension. Now, interesting and difficult to follow, but even those who are not light workers, who have no idea about any of these things, who would never read a page like that, are still here with that and still on karma. But the light workers have felt the shift, felt the time. And they know that the paradigm has shifted as well. It's the paradigm truly of co creation, of manifested mastery. Now let me tell you what happened. In the simplest form I can. When this paradigm shift took place, especially past 1987, it increased the potential that a human could vibrate at spiritually. The potential. Nothing came down and laid itself upon the human being that made them vibrate higher. It increased the potential, permission, to vibrate at a higher level, the very level that the masters of the earth vibrated while they were here. We have said it before, you're waiting for ascended masters to come back. They came back. They're here. They're on the grid of the earth. They are here esoterically, all of them. By allowance of this dispensation of mastery, and some of you felt it. It's different. And it has different rules. The way God works with men and men work with God. Let me tell you about it. A human being who decides that they are going to, with permission, given, vibrate higher, will do so. By the very intent, it begins. There are no steps to accomplish. There are no exercises to be part of because this is part of intuition. We're going to use that word again in a moment. That intuitive part of you has increased in its power, in its vibratory rate, and can push you into a higher vibration gradually if you choose or all at once, if you don't mind getting sick. <laughs> And some of you have. <laughs> a human being who vibrates faster has a different cellular structure attribute. It has to. The DNA knows it. You know it. Your body knows it. A human being in that state suddenly has the information available for them to pull upon their Akash. We've said it before. To work with that which is multidimensional. We've said it before. That didn't exist in Let Go, Let God. Now, for the first time in human history, ordinary human beings giving permission can reach behind them and take the tiller of their lifeboat by themselves, grasping it with the hand of mastery and steering it wherever they want just like the masters did. That's the difference. It changes. Let go and let God is now different. It's going to take different tools. Now what's the difference? What's wrong with let go and let God? And I'll tell you, nothing. And you can stay in that place. There's nothing wrong with it. It's beautiful. But I'll tell you something. Let go and let God put you in a place that may not be where you belong. And here's what I mean. You are in the shift of the century. 26,000 year cycle. Coming at you with a shift that is going to create a high consciousness on the planet. You can even create peace on earth. Do you want to just sit around and wait for this to might happen or might not happen? Or do you want to take control of it? 
by a worker. That's why this is here. That's why it's here. So you can reach around and take that tiller and steer that boat right where you want it to be. I'm going to give you an example. Now I told my partner earlier not to talk about the parking angel too much. <laughs> of course he did anyway. So here is the example and I'm going to use the example that I've given him before and I'm going to give you the three kinds of dispensations in the metaphor of the parking lot. For you've already established in this room with these human beings that all of you at least have heard of the parking angel and seemingly the majority have used it. We've also established that that particular attribute isn't an angel at all, it's you pretending to give away your power. <laughs> so it's the intuitive human being who is finding the parking place in an impossible situation requiring an interdimensional energy that overlooks the parking lot and sees everything. So, come with me for a moment to the parking lot. Here we have it. You're trying to find a parking place in the dispensation of karma. There is no asking God for anything. You see, you're not in communication. When you're in karma, there is no such thing as communicating with God. You, you have no idea. You need a parking place. The first thing that happens is a car smashes into you. <laughs> and that's karma. You get out and whatever happens next sets up a system. Anger? Do you meet somebody who will be the thorn in your side from then on? Lawsuit perhaps? Crumpled car? Financial problems? Whatever it is, it's karma. There it is. And you'll say, why me? And maybe it's a development from something that happened earlier you don't even remember because it was in another life where some person's chariot hit yours. Mm. That's the way karma works. It's simplified, it's cute, it's funny. I'm giving you a metaphor. You didn't get the parking place at all. You see, karma isn't that way. It just pushes and pulls you around. So you'll do things. It's in the action of human decision that the vibration of the planet changes based upon what you do. That is the crux of how things work. It's an old system. So here we are now with a graduate system moving in to the dispensation of trust. Back to the parking lot. Now you're done with karma. You're in a let go and let God. What happens next? Very large parking lot. God steers you to one side and you sit and you wait for a parking lot space to open and you wait and you wait and you're pleased and you're happy but you wait and you wait sure enough you wait long enough parking place opens up and you move into it let go and let God dispensation of trust worked Human beings got it. There's a higher power. If you wait long enough, things will come to you. Now, come with me to the parking lot of mastery. And here it is. You're in the parking lot and you need a place to park. And now, master, that which is intuitive power development intuitive power development becomes your life and that which is intuition is the connection to the higher self that which vibrates higher starts to speak to you you start the car up and you turn left and you turn right and you move around the parking lot exactly as you're supposed to heading for that place where someone is about to visit and start their car you're heading for it even before they get there because you know the potential that quantum potential is that they will get in their car and leave and you're headed for it because you got the tiller in your hand Sure enough, you arrive, they leave, you enter. In a fraction of the time that let go and let God, you are there. 
And the reason is because you have become part of the creative energy of God itself. You have taken on the mantle of what used to be what you call God itself. You're taking on the attributes the masters of the earth said you could have. Many of you love that which is the Christ in this culture. Jesus the Jew. What did he say? What were his words to you that you could remember, the ones that were written down? Every miracle, you can do this. Why do you think he showed you the things he showed you completely and totally outside of 3D? Changing matter. Outside of 3D. Why would he do such a thing? I will tell you, so he could show you what is possible for a human being on the planet. That's what he did. He says, I'm the son of God and so are you. It's what he did. It's right there for you to see. And you sit in that energy. Now let me tell you the key. What do you have to do to, to energize this mastery? You have to depend on synchronicity. That which you cannot explain, which seems to be random. You count on things that seem random, difficult to describe. It is, but let me do it. And I'll do it this way. I'll do it in the room. Who is in here who has a solution to a problem you might have? Well, unless you meet them today, you're going to both leave this room like ships that pass in the night. And Spirit brought you together. You came to this meeting for a reason you thought was accurate. New information, energy. I'll tell you why you came to the meeting. So that Spirit could put you with these other human beings. Family helps family. Those who, who have like mind, especially the masters that have come here, aware of this, are going to meet as many as they can. They're going to use their intuition to move around the room and speak to those they can. They're going to speak their truth. They're going to get a reaction. They're going to find answers. Communications will begin. Stepping stones will occur. And down the line, maybe three, three steps removed from this one, maybe five meetings later, maybe three years, they will point to this meeting and say, it wouldn't have happened unless I talked to that person, and now I have the answer. It even happens with partnerships. Romance, business, jobs, income, practical things that need to be accomplished in order for you to move forward, dear one, and get to places you'd never get to with let go and let God. I won't say the words time is running out. That's not what I want to say, but I will say this. Time is of the essence. Old souls are awakening. Why do you think you're being worked on at 3 a.m.? Hmm? What is that about? It's an amping up of energy within you so you'll be impatient. <laughs> My partner blames light workers for being so impatient and we're creating it. Hmm, now he knows he should feel silly. <laughs> it's part of the plan to get you moving. Now, get you moving? It doesn't mean you go out and, and do something, accomplish something. It doesn't mean you're going to write the book. It doesn't mean you're going to become the healer. It means that you're going to move places and, and find other people. That together you will then create a, a brighter light on the planet. That's all it means. A brighter light. Move from here to there. Facilitators who are already facilitators will have a greater facilitation because of this. Moving, doing. It will create the income you need. It will create the joy of knowing you're solving your own problems with the essence of spirit that is formally let go and let God. I want you to look at it this way. 
as you put your hand on that tiller of your own life, of your lifeboat, there is another hand that's going to come around it. Oh, can't you feel it? <laughs> There's nothing better than this. Two hands on the tiller. One of them is giving you hints. That's the one that's, that, that's God. You are the other hand, the one that's going to take it and turn it left or right. Between the two of you, you're going to go to the right place. That's what we wanted to tell you tonight. You're evolving. There are those who will criticize this message. For I see them already. In love, I see them already. And they will say, this is, this is not right, Cryon. God never changes. How can, you, how can you present such a thing? God never changes. The same yesterday, today, and forever. How can you say that? And I want to tell you, hey, God didn't change anything. Humans changed. Do you see that? Human being, you're closer to us than you've ever been before. Old souls, you are developing that energy which is the same as the Christ. It's the same that, of the masters going back as far as Elijah. Who was so tuned in, he could even select the time of his melding, which you call ascension. Those are the masters of the planet who taught you these things. And here you are. Now do something with it. And if you do, I can promise you peace on earth. That is the potential. Perhaps not in your lifetime, but you'll be back to see it. <laughs> You're all coming back. And you know why? Because when you're on the other side of the veil, you have the mind of God and you wouldn't miss it. Do you really think you're done? Do you really think you're done? And you might say, well, I thought so. This has been a hard time. <laughs> you never have to go through it again. Everything you learned this time, when you awaken next time, will be in the bag ready to go. Is that all right? old soul you're going to awaken enlightened that's because the vibration energy of this planet you never have to learn what you learned before you're going to awaken enlightened by the time you're three or four years old you'll hardly wait to go your parents won't have any idea what to do with you <laughs> like tiny little preachers each one of you <laughs> talking about spiritual things spouting metaphysics talking about your past life even as children some of them are doing it now if you noticed that's who you're gonna be don't worry about it you think you're tired now that's because the human has done a lot of work I'll tell you when you come back it's going to be different you may actually be in a place to watch peace on earth happen and when it does, remember this moment in your Akash. Remember this moment because you were told it was going to be so. And you would be there to see it. Beautiful. Because that wasn't where the planet was heading 25 years ago. Hmm? <laughs> You've evolved. You have evolved. God has stayed the same. God represents right now to you the core source of home. That which is family, that which loves you beyond measure, and that which will someday be where you will be again when all of this is over. Hmm? I wash your feet for your work, for your tiredness, for your frustration. That's why we love you the way we do. Hmm? That's why we love you the way we do. And so it is.